we saw that the Bohr's model of atom failed for even a helium atom. Okay, so it held for a monoelectronic species. Bohr's model was correct for a monoelectronic species. Mono electronic species but it failed for but it failed for for the for, for for other atoms okay so it failed for all atoms other than hydrogen atoms other than hydrogen and why did it hold for hold for hydrogen why would it hold for hydrogen Why did it hold for hydrogen? Because, because hydrogen is monoelectronic. Since it was holding for monoelectronic, hydrogen atom is the only one which is monoelectronic. Okay. Otherwise, apart from that, helium onwards, you have two electrons. Right? Now, it means there was something, something wrong with the, with the, analysis okay there was maybe nothing wrong with the model that they propounded but 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 the the way they interpreted the various various parameters like rn say vn and en since that did not match it means there was, there was something wrong with the analysis so 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 we say that the analysis of of of, a, of the Rutherford's model of atom by Bohr mm -hmm. is that is called the classical approach. That is called the classical approach to. That is called classical approach. Right. Now there must be something wrong with this approach somewhere. Right. And how did that come to notice? It came to notice by by two things which were very very important. Okay, so so two developments. Okay, what did they do? They forced us to think afresh. Why? Why? Because they were radically different from whatever we had known till now right so so the first development was was the the dual nature of matter the dual behavior of of dual behavior of matter right and the second one was Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Right? Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Correct? Now let's try to understand the first one first. That is the dual behavior of matter the dual behavior of matter right we've heard about the dual behavior of light right the dual nature of light the dual nature of light. Now let, let me recapitulate. What happened in the time of Newton? Okay, in the in the Newton's time, it was thought of the light was thought of as as made up of particles and was treated as a ray okay 
So if it moves straight as, as a particle, if it is moving straight, we keep on moving straight no matter what. Right? Later, <coughs> later came in, came in the wave theory of light. Okay? So, so earlier it was particle, then it became a wave. And how did we know that it is a wave? Because it was capable of being diffracted. Okay. It was capable of being diffracted. And what do we mean by diffraction? That if if light is, is say coming coming like that, okay, and there is a small slit that it encounters, then it, it's not so that light will keep moving straight. We have seen that, okay. right? So so hold on. So what happens is, is it's not that if light, a, a, a shaft of light is coming like that, then if you say, put a screen somewhere here, you put a screen somewhere here, okay, it does not so happen, it does not so happen, it does not so happen that that there is as big that there is as big only as 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 big a light patch here as big a light patch here as is the hole here right we see that when it is coming like that then the light tends to spread. So you will find this whole thing, okay, illuminated. Okay, if you do not believe me, then just let there be some, some hole or some opening in the door and, and see the light on a sheet of paper. You will find that it is not exactly that, somehow it seems to spread. Okay, now this set the set the people thinking and it was later established that and, and that establishment came from somewhere else it was it was it was actually maxwell maxwell okay who who actually actually found found something called an electromagnetic wave it is electromagnetic magnetic wave right and he found out that the speed of this wave the velocity of this okay its velocity was equal to the speed of light in vacuum and that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second okay now the question was what was there about the light that these these rays the electromagnetic waves they were following a following the characteristic of light the speed of light okay is there some what is the affinity what is the relationship and it was later known that light itself is an electromagnetic wave so light is an electromagnetic wave so it is not that they are trying to follow light all the electromagnetic waves they travel at 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and light is light is only the visible part of that spectrum okay that that visible part which you can actually see Correct. So, so from the particle nature, there was a swing, and we came to the conclusion that light is a wave nature thing. And from there, there, when the phenomena of of photoelectric effect was observed, photoelectric effect was observed there was no way that we were able to to explain what it was right we could not explain 
why this must be happening and why there should be a threshold frequency and we have done it in, in quite detail the, the, the photoelectric effect and, and the dual nature of, of waves earlier. So here Einstein came in, okay, so Einstein came in and, 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 and he said, he said that that while interacting with matter, while interacting with, with matter, light has, light has a particle character. Okay. It has a particle character. And he introduced the concept of, of the photon, which is the smallest particle of light. Okay, and, and each photon of frequency nu has an energy of h nu. And it is these photons which were responsible for, for ejecting out the electrons from the matter. Did we get that? We understand? Fine. Fine. So, so we see that that from the from the particle nature, it swung all the way to wave, and from there it swung all the way back to particle, right? So, so, so this is called called the dual nature. So, so from from a particle nature to to the wave nature and then then back to the particle nature okay fine so it had a dual characteristic now the moment this came a, a french scientist by the name de broy okay by by the name de broy it is written as something like de Broglie, but, but it's pronounced de Broglie. Okay, this is how it is, de Broglie. This is how it is pronounced, fine. So, so he said, he said that if light that is kind of inherently, inherently wave, Okay, because it also went interference, it went, underwent diffraction. So if it is, if, 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 a, if a wave nature thing can swing all the way and become a, behave like a particle, then, then, then the particle, which is, which is inherently particle, right? Particle should also behave like a wave okay okay and not only that he said that 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 this dual nature so matter which is which is a particle nature right you pick up a stone you throw it right it's it, it's moving like a particle correct so, so that particle should have a wave character and not only was he right, not only he was later proved right, he also gave, gave the, gave the, he also gave the formula for the wavelength and that is equal to, lambda is equal to h upon m v okay h upon the momentum of the particle where h where h is is what planck's constant it is planck's constant and 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 m is the mass of the particle okay mass of 
the particle and v is the velocity, velocity of the particle and many times this is also written as h upon p where p is the momentum of the particle and and momentum is equal to where p is equal to m v where p is equal to m v mass into velocity get that now what is the implication of this what is he trying to say okay what he's trying to say is is very very radical it's absolutely different from what we what we think about he is saying that that he is challenging our conventional wisdom he says we assume that if we throw something from here to here it goes like that right he says no that does not happen it goes like that okay this is how it will go it will go like a wave okay and the wavelength of that wave is 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 given by this okay understand so that is that is something that that we are not accustomed to right we we do not even thought that this will be happening correct now now before i go ahead let me let me tell you what what a wavelength is so if there is a wave like this if, if this is a particle and and say say this is oscillating okay so it goes on like that now what is what is the what is the wavelength it is the distance between it is distance between two particles the minimum distance between the two particles which have which have the same phase okay which are oscillating in a similar manner you can say okay in a similar manner manner the, the minimum distance okay so what happens this particle here the particle here and the particle here they are at the crest they are at the yes. highest point correct and and after this the, their tendency is is to maybe go down or, or maybe to move like that so these are the two particles minimum distance between the two particles which are which are which are oscillating identically okay we, we later later when you go we say that they are in phase okay they are in phase they are having the same angle so so what happens is is this is what is lambda okay now it's an interesting thing to be calculating the 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 wavelength of a of a common matter right so so of a, of a, of a common matter and and let's say i have a ball whose mass is is 0.1 kg that that's about 100 grams right and its velocity is is say 10 meter per second okay but can you tell me <clears throat> the wavelength of this <clears throat> can you tell me the wavelength of this what is the wavelength the wavelength lambda is given by h, h upon mv now what is h h is 6.6 
into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by 0.1 into 10 right this kg mks system okay meter kg second so i'm 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 okay with it right meter kg second so this it is the standard unit so what do we get i get one here so lambda is equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 4 meters this is one 10 into point one is one no 10 into point one is one so 100 gram ball okay 100 gram ball thrown at some 10 meter per second which you are capable of throwing with your with your hands has got a wavelength that is this long and this is this is this is not measurable okay so it's absolutely insignificant fine but if that is so 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 insignificant then why are we bothered about it how does it affect the matter so much okay because two things happen in the subatomic particles okay we have seen that lambda is equal to h upon m v now two things happen first of all the masses the mass of of the particles is very small okay so so mass is very small that is number one number two is that the velocities are very high okay so here for a macroscopic particle you 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 had a mass of 0.1 kg and a velocity of 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 10 meter per second okay now now, now this is this is for a ball now let us come to an electron an electron an electron has a mass equal to 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 okay get that which is about 10 to the power minus 30 times less than that and its speed is approximately say say we had calculated that for for the first orbit of the electrons in hydrogen atom it had come somewhere around 2 into 10 to the power 6 meters per second okay it is about 2 into 10 to the power 5 times faster than the ball that you threw here here and 2 into 10 to the power 5 is how much it is 200,000 times 2 lakh times faster correct now what happens due to that okay what happens due to that so so let us try to let's try to compute the 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 the, the wavelength due to an electron which has an energy of of 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 joules so find out the wavelength of an electron with energy with energy 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 joules this is the question correct 
And when we say the energy of an electron, what kind of energy must it be having? This energy must be, this energy must be the kinetic energy, right? So from there you'll have to find out the velocity, okay? So let us try to calculate. We are given the energy, right? So energy is nothing but the kinetic energy. So, so the solution is half m v square is given as 3 into 10 to the power minus 25. Now I am to find out the wavelength which is nothing but lambda is equal to h upon p. Okay, I, I have to find out the wavelength. So what I do, I multiply this by I multiply this by this by m and divide it by m okay and this is equal to this so 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 this is half m square v square is equal to to, to 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 into m and this is nothing but p square, right? Because we'll require p square here. So, so it is p square is equal to 2 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 into m, right? So this 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 becomes equal to so p is equal to 2 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 into m. M. So, so if if you are given energy as as say E, if 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 this is if this would have been E, then P is given by P is given by okay root over two M E. Correct? Correct? Now let us try to calculate our, our P. So, so what is P? P is root over 2 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 into 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31. Right? And this is equal to what? This is equal to 10 to the power minus 56. So, so P is equal to, equal to, this is 6. 6 into 9.1 is 54.6 into 10 to the power minus 56 and root over that. Correct? Now, 10 to the power minus 56 square root over that brings out a term of 10 to the power half of that, that is minus 28. We are stuck with finding out the root of this 54.6. So, so let's let's try to do that. Okay, let's try to do that. We have to find out the root of 54.6. Okay and square root of that and the square root of that 7.38918 yes 7.38918 so so I, I I should have cancelled it I should have called it square root of 54.6 54.6 I don't know what is it doing fifty four point six square root this cube root what is this
54.6 I'm sorry it is 54.6 okay square root is equal to what is that So it is, it is two okay. This is root y x. They're, they're trying to say this is this is this y and x. So so you'll have to tell it's two square root fifty four point six that gives you I don't know what is happening. So so this is equal to this is equal to seven point three eight seven point three eight into ten to the power minus twenty eight. Fine. Now what about the wavelength? What about the wavelength? So so wavelength lambda is equal to 6 h upon p so 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by divided by 7.38 into 10 to the power minus 28 so that gives you 8.94 into 10 to the power minus 7 we try to bring it to the nearest to the nearest micrometer or nanometer so so if i divide it by 10 it becomes 0.894 and i multiply this by 10 this becomes 10 to the power minus 6 so it is 0.894 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters which is nothing but 0.894 micrometers right just 0.894 micrometers is that okay fine